With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woo a hand clapper, a high-fiver. I kind of like the high-five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At ChumbaCasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino-style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, welcome along to the show. This is Graves on Gridiron, and I am your host, Richard Graves. It may well be the off-season in the National Football League, but time and time again we are told there is no off-season in the NFL. And that is never truer than in the month of April. Because in the last week, right around the corner, is the 2024 NFL Draft, this year being staged in Detroit, Michigan. And it's the Chicago Bears who hold the keys to the number one overall pick, the presumptive number one overall pick being quarterback Caleb Williams. In fact, if you believe what the analysts tell us, the first four picks off the board may all be quarterbacks. And that leaves the team picking at number five overall with a pick of the rest of the bunch because that team is the LA Chargers. They don't need a quarterback. And so to that end, on this week's show, we're joined by a man in his playing days who was truly lights out. That's right, it's Sean Merriman, the former linebacker for the Chargers, San Diego Chargers, as they were back in his day. Spent six years there before playing two seasons with the Buffalo Bills. He went on to have a career in broadcasting and now is the proud owner of Lights Out Extreme Fighting. And he has a big mixed martial arts card that he's promoting this weekend in California. So to discuss that, as well as the Chargers prospects for the upcoming NFL draft and other talking points in the NFL over the last few weeks. Sit back, enjoy. This is our chat with Sean Lights Out Merriman. Graves on Gridiron with Richard Graves. Well, Sean, it's great to see you. It's seven weeks or so since we were last together in person in Vegas. How are you keeping? Doing, doing well, man. Just uh, cranking away. Yeah, and, and by the way, Vegas was was next level. I think that was probably the, the craziest media row I've seen in my you know 15 Super Bowls I went to. Wasn't it just? And it was a game that lived up to the hype as well, which isn't always the case. I, I know, I know. But you know what? I, I was talking, as we talked on, on Radio Row, about... Kansas City winning, right? I, I was I was very, you know, sure that they were going to win. And I don't know how they were going to win or what the score was going to be with a minute or two left. But I knew Kansas City was just going to pull it out, man. And and uh, they're, just, they're just such a great team. And also, when we saw you on Radio Row, it wasn't just the Super Bowl we were looking forward to. You started telling us about uh, your, your latest venture in the mixed martial arts world, uh, Lights Out. Um, is your production, Lights Out Sports, uh, and you've got a, another uh, card this weekend in California. So I do want to talk about the draft uh, coming up at the end of the month, but let's start with, with current affairs and this weekend. Yeah, we, we got a huge uh, fight coming up, Lights Out Extreme fight in 15. Uh, this is our biggest card yet. We got a, about 18 fights lined up, uh, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific in California, Long Beach, California. Uh, we'll be live on football TV, football sports. Uh, we'll be soon. You hopefully you'll be able to see us on the zone. I'm talking to the zone right now, so we can get some dis- uh, distribution out there in the UK. Uh, I got a lot of football NFL fans out in the UK that's always hitting me up on Twitter saying, "When is Lights Out going to be showing out here?" So I thought that was that was important for for me to really, uh, you know, we got a lot we got a lot of fans out there, and somehow, somewhere, it's always crossed over from you know me playing in, in, on on the football field until. Now in, in MMA, so uh, soon we'll be 
on the zone at some point and have some distribution out there. And uh, also, we got Lights Out Sports. I'm, I'm launching my multi sports uh, streaming app that people will be able to see all over the world. So that'd be another way to access us. Wow, you really never stand still, do you? No, not really. Not really. You know, it's, it's funny. Somebody, you know, somebody <laughs> asks me all the time, like, what are you doing when you retire? I'm like, dude, I, I'm, I don't have that much time. I mean, <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I'm doing a lot. <laughs> and um, it, it was it was kind of this uh, transition that was almost set up to, to me happen. Um, you know, obviously being in, in, in MMA and being around the fight business, combat sports for 17 years, and then launching my own organization was uh, with Lights Out Extreme Fighting. It's just, it was right on point. Yeah, I know a few weeks ago when we were in the States together, you said that you actually incorporated that into your day-to-day training when you are playing in the NFL. It was just a natural progression, really, to, to go into that world once you retired. Yeah, and I still, I mean, I, I still, I'm still hitting it pretty hard. Um, in fact, later on in the day, I'll go spar a couple of rounds with some of the pros. Uh, and, and I see a lot of this crossover, right, with, with NFL players transitioning into combat sports, whether it's boxing or MMA. I think there's going to be more NFL, former NFL players coming soon in, in the MMA business because the opportunity is there, right? Like when I retired in 2013, they wouldn't pay guys like they are now. So the opportunity for guys to go and make another living in, in combat sports are there. Well, on that note, we heard Micah Parsons talk last off season about how he'd sort of ventured a little bit down that road in, in order to enhance his game. Do you, do you have current NFL players coming to you now and inquiring about what you're doing, seeing if they can incorporate that to make them better players? Absolutely. And it's, it's normally a lot of guys who don't have these long careers, right? Maybe suffered an injury, maybe got cut or released from a, from a team or got traded. They're not getting picked up anymore and they're still young. Right. They still want to compete. So we I get a lot of those guys now that are, are right now taking up jujitsu or taking up Muay Thai because uh, they're seeing the upside in this business, in this sport. You know, MMA now is so global. Right. You can see them. You can see it all over the world. And that was that was my biggest thing. Right. Uh, with Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Obviously, uh, the NFL is king here in the States and the U.S. Uh, and making their way to the U.K. and other, you know, other uh, countries and whatnot. But uh, MMA is global. You know, combat sports this is global. Everybody's watching combat sports all over the world. So now it's about just getting distribution for the brand so people can see us. I mean, it was out, it was really important for us to get uh, viewership and distribution out there in the UK because we were getting so many requests on how do we watch out there. So now I'm working on that. And you offer a little, little bit something different in your products, don't you? Now, I was reading um, earlier today ahead of Lights Out 15, you've been trialling new tech in gloves, bringing analytics um, in, into play. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, yeah. We tra- we partnered with a company called Shot Tracker. We use their technology. Um, if people don't know them, they, they have that chip in the NBA basketball, the MLB, yeah. PGA, uh, can measure speed, power, punch, impact, velocity, G-force. I mean, it was so much data that we pulled from this uh, last fight that we had. It was just a bunch of raw data that we had to go out and build an algorithm. You know, people can see now when that punch lands, where it lands at or, or in the cage, how hard or how fast that punch or where it landed on the, on the guy's body and take that data and put it instantly up on the screen. And I think for me personally, being kind of a, a big geek myself a little bit, not get, you know, kind of getting into, <laughs> you know, numbers, man. I'm like, man, that punch was over, you know, 30 G force. And you talk about IMUs and all this real other really cool stuff or how fast and velocity that punch traveled. Uh, you know, where are guys getting hit at? If it, is his back up against mm-hmm. the cage? Is he getting struck more in, in the middle? And so all this information has become instantaneous for us, and that's what we're trying to do right now. The data was great. It came out better than we can expect. Now we're seeing how fast can we display that data up on the screen for the fans watching our fights. And how are you going to utilize that data? Is it purely to enhance the entertainment for fans or during bouts? Is it that fast, that quick that, that you know, the, the guys in the corner can get it to the fighters and perhaps they can, can alter the, the way a fight's going mid-fight? Oh, absolutely. Well, one, we, we always, I, I try to do as much and many things I could for the fan engagement, right? I'm, I'm the, Fan engagement for me is number one. We want to we want to get all fans locked into what we're doing and give them as much information during the fight. I think that, um, you know, as a player, as a, as a football player, when this data became, you know, very instant and analytical, it made us a better player. We found out, we looked at certain things, and now, you know, even now, you'll be able to uh, really analyze this data and use it for betting. We know that it's going to be used for, for betting down the road, and we're not far off. We're a few months away for, for from this data being very accurate, where these betting companies now can pick up on it. So presumably then, the way you're talking 
tends to imply that there's going to be some sort of hookup partnership between your organization and potentially others down the road. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. We're, we're talking to several, several of the biggest uh, betting companies right now who want to use this data, who's looking at this data and want to be involved. So that's that's our key goal is uh, to get this data accurate, because once we know the data accurate, it is very, very valuable, um, not just to the betters, but healthcare companies, uh, you name it. Well, this data will be used in, 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 a, in a, a, a lot of different ways. But more importantly, I think, for, number one, starting out, the fans have to really get engaged into, into what we're doing. And we know that that's a big way to do it. Well, it's certainly innovative, uh, and it's look, it's a competitive business, isn't it? There's no dressing it up. Um, everybody talks about the UFC and what Dana White's doing. So, so where do you see your products now sitting when it comes to mixed martial arts? Well, you know, we want to be valuable in what we're doing, right? There's no question the UFC is the, is the big dog. They'll, in my opinion, will always be the big dog. And we actually we love when fighters get an opportunity to go to the UFC, right? We we love that because we want to be known as, as sending the best fighters to the biggest place in in the business in the market and if you can do that um it kind of sets you apart from a lot of other promotions and organizations but more importantly we have a rabid group of fans i mean our fights you know a couple mm. thousand people there and people are screaming and going crazy and just the intense level and um and just the feedback that we get on social media doing when, when our fights are live on football or wherever it's airing at uh, and like I said, when we drop Lights Out Sports, it's multi-sports platform. It'll be on all major platforms in 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 the world, and that that to me is, is really going to be a game changer for us. Graves on Gridiron. Let's talk a little bit more then about this weekend's card, Lights Out 15, because it's headlined by Ramirez and uh, Palomino. But I know Stephen on your social media um, in the last day or so. You, you were saying, look, it's fight week, you're excited, um, but it's the up-and-coming talent that, that really gets the, the juices flowing. You picked out the Cuban hunter, Lazaro Dayron. Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, man, Lazaro. He, he uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really in the storage, right, because I think when I played in the NFL, watching NFL, NFL films, that 30 for 30, like the back yeah. end of guys' stories is why it, it, it drew me to whatever I was watching. I wanted to know that guy's story. And uh, Lazaro, he has a great story, man. He's uh, he's a, he's from Cuba. How he got here, his family, uh, why he's fighting. Uh, very, very, very tough upbringing. This dude is um, he has a different mentality. He's not fighting for money. He's fighting for his family and like him to be here and and, and his pathway to get here. It's, it, he has an incredible story. And let me tell you, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep this guy. I don't think I'm going to keep him for long because I know that the UFC is going to be knocking after a You're couple fights. You're excited about him, aren't you? I, I am, man. I am because I, I think he's going to put on a show. He's also fighting another veteran too that night. I believe, um, you know, the guy he's fighting is seven and seven and two as well. Is yes, he's seven. And, yeah, seven and two. So Lazaro seven and zero, oh, and uh, his opponent is seven and two, man. But so he's not fighting a slouch. You know, this guy who he's fighting is actually really legit. But I'm 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 very very excited for people to see Lazaro, man. This is going to be it's going to be big. Yeah, we're excited to see some of this young emerging talent coming through as well. As indeed will everybody around the NFL come the end of this month because Detroit, Michigan's the the host city for this year's NFL draft. A um, lot going on with one of your former teams, uh, the Chargers, of course. New head coach now in situ, new general manager, and it's going to be a different roster when you look at some of the players they've allowed to walk out the door in free agency. Yeah. And, you know, it's the business is crazy. And I try to explain to everybody, um, you, know, uh, you know, it was a big thing here with Keenan Allen, right? The wide receiver for the Chargers left and went to the Bears. And, you know, he probably has a couple years left to play. And so if, if the, another team is willing to pay you the contract you're looking for on your way out, you know, you don't have another five years left. It becomes a business decision. And, you know, during the draft, it, a lot of guys don't know if they're going to be there or stand out the door. But you find out when they draft somebody in your position, right? You, you That is a day you're watching. And I've been there. I'm speaking from experience. Sitting there watching ESPN, watching the draft. Next thing you know, they draft a guy in your position. They're telling you, hey, we're looking mm -hmm. to move on from you at some point. But once you understand that that's how the business works, you, you don't take anything personal. Um, I do think it's going to be an exciting season because there's a lot of big name uh, guys that are going, supposedly supposedly come in and change the team around. A lot of quarterbacks and Kayla Will Williams and Daniels uh, McCarthy that's kind of popping up from Michigan, and and so there there's some names that people are going to be uh, the team's going to be drafting. 
that no one is talking about outside of that top 10 or top 15. Hey, and that's interesting, isn't it? Because it, in many respects, if you believe what all the pundits, Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks, et al., are saying, the top four picks potentially are all going to be quarterbacks. Well, here you are, number five overall pick, the LA Chargers. Mm. And I've already heard Jim Harbour say, for him, the best player in this draft isn't a quarterback. He feels if they don't trade out of that position, potentially the Chargers have the option of taking the best player in the draft. Yeah, no, no question. And I think that he's talking about Marvin, Her Marvin Harrison Jr. being one of them. Uh, neighbors from uh, from LSU is, is another one that, that's an yeah. explosive player. You know, we just talked about Keenan Allen leaving the Chargers, going, you know, going to the Bears. Mike Williams is also gone. I think he signed with the, with the Jets or something like that. And so when you look at it, that is the biggest position to field, especially when you got a franchise quarterback like Justin Herbert, right? You you, you get that top player, that best player in the, in the draft, which is going to be one of those two wide receivers, in my opinion, right? The, sh the two short guys that you know are going to go out and get on the field and play well early. You got Justin Herbert as a, as a quarterback. Now you go beef up the offensive line, right? Because now you have to protect Justin Herbert so he can get the ball down to those guys. So, in that order, when you're looking at drafting guys, yes, you go for the best player there. You get him first. And the second thing you want to do is start a draft in your team needs. So that's that's normally how the draft takes place. Well, I was going to say, let, let me put you in position of GM of the Chargers for this month, uh, Sean. Uh, and you know the fans are wanting one of these high-profile, flashy, <coughs> high-priced wide receivers because they've seen the highlight tape. They want some of that to, over in LA. But you've got a franchise quarterback in Justin Herbert several years ago. They took Rashawn Slater, the big offensive tackle. I think it was number 10 overall around there. And he has been superb. Day one starter at left tackle. So now you're looking at the offensive line. Do you do you give your franchise quarterback the weapons to pose a problem downfield? Or do you look at the offensive line and look at somebody, say, like Joe Alt and try and put him at right tackle and, and protect your quarterback? You, you go for that the best player, which is one of the two wide receivers that you can get to. You can't trade out of that pick. You can't look at anyone else because that is your biggest need because of what happened with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. If one of those two guys is still there, I would say, OK, maybe you might want to trade out of it and get two first round picks right out of that and maybe 2025 you trade out there but you can't pass up on generational talent with marvin harrison jr or neighbors i think their neighbors going to be another scary one that's going to be very very explosive in the nfl and then you start looking at your d tackles and offense alignment positions right your defensive tackles and your offensive tackles i think that you start looking at that second because you can you can still get that later in the first round or or i mean sorry later in the second round somewhere you can still get quality linemen because linemen are not going to keep going in the first round all the time. So you can still address those needs. But generational talent-wise, you cannot pass up on one of these two guys. It's just – you can't. It's a great problem to have, isn't it? it, it I mean, look, it, it is a great problem because you one of these two one of these two guys is going to fall on your lap. You, you're going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. or Neighbors. And I can't even ask answer the question directly on which guy I want because – both of them are that good, right? Both of them have that skill. Up neighbor, neighbors just ran a four three mm. something in, in a forty, and we all see Mar what Marvin Harrison Jr. can do over there from Ohio State. We've seen what both of these guys can do, but neighbors just just improved his draft stock even more and even higher than it was before. What's the biggest position position of need as you see it with the Chargers? It, it's wide receiver, in my opinion. It, it's wide receiver, and I will go. I will go defensive line. You got to get a big interior defensive line to stop that run. They had a Problem stopping a run last year, and I would I yeah. would definitely go to the D lineman. And look, if, and if one of those top offensive tackles slip to the second round, you get him. But if if you're the guy, the offensive tackle that you want is gone, then you automatically go D lineman. Can't talk draft without asking you about uh, this year's linebacker class, Sean. Um, I, I was looking through it early in the day, and and it, it's not what you call. Um, a standout year for for that position, but you do have Dallas Turner, who is more of a hybrid type player, perhaps it in your mold um, for, out of Alabama, who's going to go probably in the top ten. He's probably standout, isn't he? He is. He is standout, and so that's why you look at all the guys who you know going to be going top ten, uh, and he's one of them. He's he'll be he'll be going to win that top ten level. I think a guy that no one's really talking about enough is Chop Robinson from Penn State. Um, the, the outstanding pass rusher from there. He's from Maryland. I watched him as a kid uh, when he was growing up, and this guy's not being talked about enough. He he has that defensive rookie 
mentality, that defensive rookie uh, opportunity with him. He's that explosive, and you can put him in all over the field. He's a he's another version. Um, yeah, I would say I wouldn't. I hate the comparison to players, but in coming from Penn State too. Michael Parsons, man, he, he's a guy that you can line up in that many positions and, and people are not talking about him enough. And, you know, given what um, has happened with Michael Parsons and Dallas, every team in the NFL now is looking for that type of player, physical, athletic, that can move, has got speed and seeing if they can, you know, get, get somebody that can be a difference maker on their defensive side of the ball. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, it's, it's relatively simple for me because if you're going to go out and pay these quarterbacks, all that money, you're going to get them top top notch money. Now you got to get somebody who can stop them. Now you got to pay him top notch money, and that's how when you're talking about the the pay scale goes, right? You, you pay your quarterback. Okay, now who can stop the quarterbacks? And that's cornerbacks and pass rushers. Those those are your two key guys that you look to draft when you're talking about um, a division like the AFC West is loaded, right? With with just talent, um, or you talk about these quarterbacks in these other divisions, you have to go start mm-hmm. drafting pass rushers to stop them because those are the single-handedly most explosive people and again guys who can get to the quarterback more frequently than anyone else so if you want to if you want to stop that great quarterback go and draft you a pass rusher and that put an end to a lot of those things yeah and especially in the division that the Chargers find themselves in with the quarterbacks certain Patrick Mahomes um there and obviously the Raiders doing their things on the defensive side of the ball, you have to be able to to cause problems in the backfield, don't you? Yeah, no question. And you know, every uh, every great uh, quarterback knows that he hates looking across the field and seeing a, a Max Crosby from the Raiders, right? Seeing a Khalil Mack, uh, a Joey Bosa. You don't you you don't want to see those guys because you know they're going to be a, a a pain for for, for four quarters and. Um, there's a lot of young up and uh, coming talent that people are not talking about in two years, uh, too late. Uh, the pass rusher from the Chargers, he he is another one that um, that I think is going to come onto the scene and have a, have a really big year. And just from your perspective as well, that there's always one player, isn't there, that's highly touted going to the draft that it doesn't pan out the way they'd hoped on draft night, and they're sat in the green room or sat at home and seeing picks go off the board and it's not their name what what is your message to whoever that might be this year stay home <laughs> don't go to the draft <laughs> that's what you know that's that's what I did you know they I was invited to the draft and you know I just remember watching the drafts before me and guys just sitting there with that damn camera in their face and, and they're supposed to go in the top 10 they don't go till you know later on in the first sometime in the second and I, I wanted to be with my with my family. I wanted to be with my coaches and friends, you know, people I knew. And at that point, I already did the work. I, I did had the combine, had the pro day. I obviously put up great numbers in college. And so at that point, I was just sitting back. Whoever was going to call my name, I was ready for it. But the last thing I wanted is to be sitting somewhere with a camera in my face the entire time. I just couldn't I couldn't deal with that. Do you still remember what how, what the feelings were when the Chargers called your name? Yeah, yeah. In, in fact, um, you know, they started talking about being the number three pick to Cleveland uh, when they went with Braylon Edwards out of, out of Michigan. Uh, but they brought up my name. So I knew at some point around that 3 to 15, my name was going to be called. I met with the Detroit Lions. I met with the then Washington Redskins. Uh, I, you know, I met with uh, the Cowboys and I met with the Chargers. So I knew somewhere in that top 12 I was going to be gone. I just didn't know where. Wait, did you get nervous? Oh, I was nervous as hell. I was I was nervous, <laughs> you know, because it, it's the fact of, uh, you, look, you're, you're fortunate and you're lucky to get drafted anywhere, right? I mean, it, you if your name is called in that first round, it is a, a honor, it is a privilege, but I did not want to go to Cleveland, right? Because they just, they wasn't a good team. And so when somebody called your name, you got to kind of clap and smile and happy to go there. But at that time, they wasn't that that great of a team. And, and I didn't want to, I wanted to go to someone that was going to win, right? That was putting me an opportunity. I can, I can go win a championship or have an opportunity to win a championship. And so I was looking at them and I was looking at Detroit Lions and some of these teams who I know were just so far from going to you know, to win in, win in football games that I said, man, I just, I don't want to go there. So, and uh, so when I knew that I was going to the Cowboys or Chargers, I said, okay, 11 or 12, I'm good with either one of these. So for all these so-called experts, uh, media pundits like myself that turn around and give you the argument of 
that one of the teams in past years, it would have been Cleveland or, or Detroit, not so much now. But you say, oh, it's an opportunity for this player to go and transform a franchise. He's got an opportunity to, to make history. You would say, well, you might say that, but that's rubbish. That's not where I want to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you don't say that before, right? At least, at least not publicly behind closed doors. You might be talking to your agent and say, man, I don't want to go to Cleveland, right? I don't want to go to Detroit. And you'll, you'll have these conversations. But like I said, when you when the, the nervousness of draft day is you're sitting back and you got no control, right? You Sometimes you can even go tell the team that you don't want to go there. And they will still draft you because they know that once you get there, they feel like they can change your opinion, change your mindset on, on just being in that organization. But behind closed doors, those conversations happen all the time. It's good to know. Bit of reality thrown on the draft. Of course, for some players, they won't get drafted, but there'll be free agency um, that follows it and they'll be signed anyway. Uh, before that, obviously, there's been the International Player Pathway Programme, which has been going for a number of years now. It's created a lot of waves over this side of the pond this time around because of the Welsh Rugby Union star, Lewis Rees Samet, went through it and gets picked up on a three-year deal by the Kansas City Chiefs. It, in past years, would have said, look, for a skill position, it is extraordinarily difficult to come into an organization and start day one. But for somebody like Reese Samet, with his speed, his athleticism, and given the changing of the kickoff rules this past week in the NFL, does he have a better chance now than previously? Yeah, no, no question. No question at all. And I'm glad they're doing that. And the reason why I'm glad they're doing that is because there's a lot of talent out here, unseen, uh, unfounded talent, especially there, mm -hmm. And to have that bridge, you know, that that bridge um, where guys have that opportunity to be seen because that's all you need. That's sometimes all you need is an opportunity to be seen. And I think that more and more they're going to be wide receivers. They're, they're going to be uh, there's going to be some offensive tackles. They're going to, you know, it'll it, it'll start the more and more guys feel like they have an opportunity the more and more the guys are going to start practicing blocking patterns, right? They're going to start catching the ball. They're going to start working on their football drills because they know that one moment to shine, they have that real opportunity. So I'm glad that bridge program is there. And just finally, Sean, as a former player yourself, what's your view on the change to the kickoff rules? I, I, um, look, I was a guy that ran down on kickoff and I hit those big wedges, right, with those offensive linemen. And I'm telling you, they hurt, all right? <laughs> I mean... They, you, you're, you're walking into probably you know 900 pounds of human being yeah. with three offensive linemen that you're running smack dead into full speed. I'm glad they took that out because that's not needed. Um, it's going to take me a little bit getting used to. I've seen it, you know, obviously in the in the UFL, them them doing it already and them them practicing. It looks cool. Uh, another thing I really like about that is it gives guys an opportunity to return the ball, right? The Cordell Pattersons of the world, the Devin Hester's, like these are special talents that when you, when the kickoff rule changed and the ball was just kicked out of bounds, you don't get a chance to see a kickoff. So that, that part of the game was almost eliminated. So for them to do this again and create opportunities for those kickoff returners is pretty cool. Absolutely. There's a lot to look forward to and a lot to get excited about. Not least what you've got going on this weekend. Lights Out 15. Just remind the, the listeners and viewers where they can catch it this Saturday. That's right. You can look us up on Football Sports, Football TV. We will have replays coming after after uh, this weekend. We'll have replays coming, hopefully, on DAZN and some of these other places. Lights Out Sports It will be here in a few weeks. We're launching. So... People will be able to download the app all over the world. We're going to start in the U.S. for the first couple of months. But after that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start rolling it out in other countries. But we're talking about every month we'll be kind of rolling it out in the country. So Lights Out Sports coming. But Lights Out Extreme Fighting, look us up. LightsOutXF.com. We got a uh, got a big card this Saturday in Long Beach, California. That's fantastic. We wish you the very best of luck with that one. As always, great catching up with you, Sean. Hope it all goes well, and we'll have to do this again soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. My thanks, as always, to Sean Merriman. He's a busy man, but a man you never get tired of talking any sport, quite frankly, uh, to. All the best of luck to him this weekend at his Lights Out Extreme Fighting promotion down there in California. If you didn't quite catch it, uh, you can catch up on everything that happens this weekend by going to Fubo, www fubo.tv and you'll find directions to catch up on that promotion there and as he said fingers crossed there will be a deal in the coming weeks uh, signed with DAZN so you can see everything from his promotion here in the UK uh, via that medium as for us well we are zeroing in on the NFL draft right now we'll be back with you 
before then. I hope you enjoyed this chat with Sean Merriman and his thoughts, views and opinions on the road that lies ahead because this is an uncertain month for many NFL prospects. Make no mistake, those nerves are now jangling as all roads lead to Detroit, Michigan at the end of this month and the 2024 NFL Draft. A reminder, as always, keep up to date with what's going on in the National Football League via our social media platforms, the Graves on Gridiron page on Facebook, equally on Twitter. Hit me up with your thoughts and opinions at Richard Graves one It's RDG Media UK on Instagram, or we're on YouTube as well. If you're listening to this podcast and want to see uh, the video of our chat with Sean Merriman, uh, go to RDG Media UK. I believe the handle there is at Richard Graves TV. An easy one to remember. But for now, as always, so long, everybody. Subscribe to Graves on Gridiron wherever you listen to podcasts. And keep up to date with the latest on Twitter. Search for Richard Graves 1. That's Richard Graves, the number one. Sports Social Podcast Network. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.